Welcome back to the Steve Gruber Show. So glad you're here to talk about everything important to you. And number one, far and away, to people casting ballots beginning as soon as about two weeks from now, it's the economy, stupid, as Bill Clinton said. It is the economy. It's how much you pay for gasoline, for groceries, your electric bill, whether or not you can get a mortgage, whether or not you can pay off your credit card. This is all important to people. And look, they can tell you how great inflation is, but it's cumulative. They forget to tell you that part. Better than 20% of inflation has happened in the last three and a half years. Some items on the menu, 30, 40, 50% more expensive. Joining me now, Mark Matson, financial expert and the author of a brand new book, Experiencing the American Dream. Mark, good to have you here. Great to be with you, Steve. Well, nice to see you again. Look, um, uh, Kamala Harris during the debate on Tuesday was asked a very simple question. Are you better off than you were four years ago? She didn't answer the question. She dodged it, told us some story about how she was a middle-class kid, which she was not, by the way. She was raised in a very privileged manner by two very wealthy parents in Canada and then in California, so that's nonsense. And, and then she talked about the opportunity economy. And if I may be so bold, I believe that Donald Trump gave Americans an opportunity economy because things were so good they had the opportunity to have a good job, to get a mortgage, to buy groceries without bankrupting themselves for the month. That was the opportunity economy delivered by Donald Trump, which I believe he can do again. But I think uh, Kamala Harris's opportunity economy means you get to buy stuff for other people and I get to buy stuff for other people. And we give our money away. Am I wrong? No, I think you're dead right on that. Look, uh, I, people forget that inflation is actually a form of tax. Uh, you know, they, they, they think it's just something that amorphous. She's, she's trying to pin it on big corporations. Uh, she's trying to say that it's price gouging. Look, free markets and capitalism are based on competition. Uh, that helps keep prices down and innovation high. And in her economy, uh, it looks much more like a socialist or a communist economy uh, where she wants to control every aspect of capital. Look, the American dream, which most people still want and desire in this country, uh, largely revol revolves around having a home, uh, having a family, being able to send your kids to college, uh, someday being able to retire. And all of those get tougher under uh, common law omics, if you want to call it that, uh, because there's going to be higher taxes, no matter what she says. There's going to be more inflation. Uh, it's going to be very destructive to the American family. Uh, and it's really heading the country in the wrong direction, for sure. Well, here we have her talking about wage and price controls, which were an absolute failure under a Republican president back in the 1970s led us into one of the worst financial periods of my lifetime, the late 70s into the early 80s, until Ronald Reagan got that ship turned around. Uh, she talks about $25,000 handouts for people to go buy a new house for the first time. She talks about $50,000 handouts for people that want to start a business. I think I should start 10 this year, see if I can get 50 grand a shot. I mean, if that's going to be the case. And of course, there's no way to pay for any of this. And, and people don't realize, we just surpassed the one trillion dollar mark on interest paid on the national debt that we have already. And that's a bigger problem, isn't it, Mark? Well, it, it absolutely is a bigger problem. Look, who cares if you get a $25,000 uh, uh, handout to help buy a house, uh, you still can't afford the mortgage. Interest rates are extremely high right now. Uh, that doesn't help you out at all. And then of course you need the down payment, 20, 30, 40%, uh, depending on what kind of home you buy and where the location of it is. So this is not this is not going to help anything. The the number one thing, and I really wish Trump had uh, brought this out in the debate, was that they're going to do away with the Trump tax cuts. That's a twenty percent increase for everybody across the board. And when we got the tax uh, cuts under Trump, don't forget that they took away the itemized deductions for most of us, and that was largely the state deduction. So if you live in California or New York, your taxes go up. Uh, two, three, four, five percent. And then on addition to that, now uh, they're not going to give you those deductions back. Uh, so it's really, you know, it could easily be looking at 45, 50 percent marginal tax uh, rate. So what do they want? In theory, they want half of all your money when you make it. More. They want to do away with capital gains. That's almost. Well, well, and let's talk about that, Mark. I want to I want to yeah. underline that right there. Capital gains, I think they want to take from, what is it, 21 to 44.6, right? That's right. They, and they want to take and charge you for unrealized capital gains. Now, I don't think that will ever make it through Congress, but the fact that anybody would float such an utterly stupid idea 
is remarkable. And the only way I can uh, really highlight it for people or, or demonstrate it is say, you buy $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, something that drives the government crazy, by the way, because you're out of their control. $1,000 of Bitcoin, it's now valued at $2,000. The government wants to charge you 25% on that $1,000, even though you didn't sell the Bitcoin. And let's say Bitcoin crashes back to 500 and you've paid 250. Now your $1,000 investment's worth 250 bucks. Do you get a refund from the government? Of course not, but they'll give away free stuff to people in the country illegally all day long. Do I sound bitter? No, but I am pretty upset by it. I think you sound realistic. I think you sound like you believe in free markets and capitalism. Crazy uh, idea. That, in that debate the other day was just her hiding uh, her communist and socialist tendencies. And, you know, look, that's exactly what they're going to do in the unrealized capital gains. Look, these are just the things that they're saying uh, that they want you to hear, not the things that they really want to do once they get into office. And if we have capital gains at 45 percent, you're trying to uh, invest for your retirement. You put half a million dollars in stocks or mutual funds. It grows to two million dollars. You have, have one point five million dollar gain. And they want almost half, half of your money. And now they're suggesting estate taxes as high as 65%. Half when I make it originally as income, half when I invest it when it grows, half when I die. What is left for your American dream? You know, dream? what they don't understand, and what they don't understand about the estate tax, the death tax, is that, you know, they talk a lot about um, reparations and so forth. Well, the estate tax is absolute death to black farmers in the South here in America. People that have put together good-sized farms in the South, black farmers, good farmers. Well, if you have an estate tax of 65% and they've got 1,000 acres or 2,000 acres that they're turning, and they die, and they've got three or four kids that now have to split this up, the kids can't pay the estate tax without breaking up and destroying the farm, which means the next generation of black farmers have been destroyed. But they don't see the collateral damage, do they? They don't. Hey, Steve, they don't see it, and they don't care. Uh, you know, you're exactly right. You, you start from scratch. I started my company with an overhead projector, a yellow pad, and $30,000 in debt in 1991. Uh, today, we have 70 employees and manage $10.8 billion. If I die, when I die, they're going to come in, value that company, and then they're going to say I want 40, 50, 60% of all the value, which forces a fire sale. And then what? Employees get fired. The dream gets fired. It That's doesn't right. get passed down to people to run it. It gets confiscated by the American government, and that is the very nature then, of communism itself. And then, Mark, what they say is, well, those business people, they did it wrong. So we need more regulation so that Mark's company doesn't fire people anymore. In fact, what we want to do, Mark, is this. For the baker down the street, we want to make sure that we dictate how much they pay employees. Oh, and then we're going to tell the baker how much he can sell a loaf of bread for. Because that makes perfect sense right out of the central planning playbook, right? Yeah, and, and then they want to force you, uh, force who you hire with diversity. Oh, yeah, and forgot equity. that. Yeah, 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 and, that's right. And I always tell my employees, I said, look, guys, the best way to have diversity is hire the very best people you can get. And we have great diversity here. And I tell our employees, it's not because you check some box uh, of someone you're supposed to hire. You are the absolutely best people I can uh, find. I agree with that. In fact, a good friend of mine that owns a number of companies uh, more than I do, um, he says this. He goes, I don't care if some dude shows up in a dress. I don't care. Do the job. But don't sit there and run your mouth about how you need this or that and da-da-da. You need to No, do the job. If you do the job, I don't care. You can wear a dress if you're a dude. Don't care. Just do the job. Uh, that's a good friend of mine, Todd. What do you think of Todd's thought on that? I, I love Todd. You know, if you're a capitalist... Uh, and you're an entrepreneur and you're an innovator, you, you are competing against other innovators and other businesses. And, and you, have to have, you have to have the best people. You can't afford, like government, to have people that are incompetent in this big bureaucracy, this big machine that just chews people up and spits them out. Her plan is basically confiscate wealth from people that created it, distribute it to herself and her power base, uh, and redistribute the wealth restrict the business growth and continue to build uh, build up the government. And Reagan said it, as you've mentioned, Reagan said it extremely well. You know, government is your in, uh, is your enemy. Big government is is the is the thing to avoid at all costs. And then you have to protect the sovereignty. Maggie said it better, though. Itself. 
I think Maggie said it better. Socialism's great to run out of other people's money. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, yeah. Uh, you know, and Kamala Harris also wants to give reparations. Pretty funny for the descendant of an Irish slave owner in Jamaica. But hey, I'm just nitpicking, all right? Just nitpicking on that one. Uh, the new book, Experiencing the American Dream. I hope people can. I do, Mark, because I hope that we can avoid socialism and communism. I hope we're smart enough to do the right thing in November. I believe we are. I believe if the election were held today, people will reject this socialist nonsense, but we'll have to see what happens. Thank you so much for spending time here today. My pleasure, Steve. It's been great. Mark Matson. thank you so much. All right, you can find out more by looking him up online, following on social media as well. You can do the same with us. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook. And remember, you can support us by subscribing to Substack. This is The Steve Gruber Show.